Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Project Elite. This was sent to me by Simon Games, and it's designed by Konstantinos Kokinis and Sotirio Santillas. Project Elite is a fast-paced cooperative board game for one to six players who take on the role of members of an elite squad recruited to stop an invading alien force. These fearless soldiers have been assigned several missions that must be fulfilled before their window of operations closes and time runs out. While the game itself controls the aliens and their activations, players engage in frantic rounds of real-time dice rolling that allow them to move, search for weapons and items, and fight against the incoming swarm of aliens. Let me show you how to play. So in Project Elite, you're trying to fulfill several missions before your window of operation closes and time runs out. Um, you'll be rolling dice in real time, trying to move around the board, and while shooting a bunch of aliens. A game of Project Elite is played over a maximum of eight game rounds, uh, and there's five phases, event phase, alien spawning phase, action phase, alien activation phase, and end of the round phase. At the beginning of each game round, uh, you take the event deck and you reveal a card. In this case, no effect, but sometimes they do have an effect, like uh, this one, for example, limited equipments. Uh, heroes may not perform search actions or draw alien tech cards. So when these are revealed, uh, they stay in play with this ongoing effect symbol until the requirements are fulfilled. I'll get to that later. There are also sometimes immediate effects like uh, Swarm Rush immediately reveal and resolve an additional Swarm Spawn card. After the event, you do the alien spawning. And we're going to go with medium difficulty. So in this case, it's one card per player and two boss cards. Uh, so we go into two steps. To spawn new alien swarms, reveal and resolve the required number of cards from the top of the swarm deck. So the first card here is Shooter. Uh, this tells you how many, and this tells you where to uh, spawn them. So if we move over here, it's time to play some monsters. So we will put three shooters around number two. If you pull a card like this, it's five biters, and you get to choose where to put them. So let's say we decide to put them around spawn point number one. If you ever run out of spawn points, you have to decide to push an alien. So let's say I decide to push this one forward and put this one here. If the spawn card has this symbol on it, that means the enemies get to activate. So they perform their ability step and then perform their movement step. Um, so if I have two shooters around number one, not only do I have to push some more, so let's let's do let's do one here, and let's do one here. You look at their activation card. In this case, shooters roll one hit die for each hero within range three. There are no heroes within range three, so you don't have to worry about that. But then they all get to move one. So uh, these two that got spawned, they're gonna move forward and move forward. And you keep doing this until you've done uh, enough cards for the round. And here's some runners uh, we can choose, so we're going to put them around number three. And this is going to require some pushing. That requires some pushing. Here's another example of activation. In this case, it's three uh, runners around uh, spawn point three, and they activate. So first off, oh boy, these would have to get pushed forward based off the arrows. So one here, one here. Oh boy, let's push all these forward. Uh, but then worse is those three are not gonna activate. So in this case, they all move three. So it's gonna be a lot of pushing here. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then five shooters where we want. You know what, let's put them here. And again, a little more pushing there. So as you can see, a whole lot of aliens are, are gonna start coming towards our, our heroes here. Then you have to reveal boss cards. Uh, in, this, in medium difficulty, it's two at a time. So the first one, all clear. The second one, all clear. Now, if you're not lucky, Let's say we draw old Seer Sting here. Um, there's an activation symbol, meaning this guy also activates. We get a special mini for this. To determine where the boss goes, you actually roll a hit die, uh, and you insert it to two. It's gonna go into this one here. So I'll put old Seer Sting here. Uh, but then Seer Sting gets to activate, 
So first off, heroes within range two suffer one damage. That doesn't apply. But then it gets to move three. So it's going to do some more pushing. One. Two. Let's move it here. Three. This symbol here tells you how much health it has uh, to defeat it. Now, once we're done with all the spawning, then it's time for the action phase, which is the meat of the game. The action phase duration is two minutes. You can use the timer that they provide or just use a phone timer. We actually use the phone timer. And you're going to roll dice to perform different actions. Once that time starts, everyone can just start rolling their dice real time. Um, now, because this is real time and simultaneous, sometimes you do actions or take decisions that don't go as expected. Uh, but once you do an action, you have to, you can't take it back. Now, as you roll your die, um, there are several things you can do with them. Uh, you can spend them by setting them aside and resolving its effect, or allocating them in action slots. So throughout the action phase, um, you may re-roll any number of dice any number of times in any combination. Uh, you may choose to resolve any result, result, uh, result rolled, or may choose to re-roll it. If you ever roll one of these, though, uh, you have to resolve these before re-rolling or performing any other actions. If you ever roll one of these, you have to choose an alien on the board and move it. So it can be any of them, the boss or a regular one, and you just, boop, move it along one of the paths. Um, that is your punishment for rolling those red ones. You have to resolve these before you can do anything else. Uh, if you roll one of these, you can move your figure. So if you roll a movement, you can, bam, move it. And if you keep rolling movements, you can go boom, boom, and keep moving. If you're near, if you're adjacent to a search token, and you roll one of these, you can activate it and do a search. What you can then do is draw three cards from the search deck, uh, choose one to keep, and discard the other two. As you can see, all have different little abilities here. Another option you can do if you don't want to waste time uh, is you can take the token off the map uh, and draw three cards. Uh, at the end of the action phase, after you've done all your rolling. Either way, this is a one-time use, and we got some options here, like she could pick up Boss Killer, uh, which is a pretty beefy weapon, or uh, she could get Attachments, which uh, improve weapon stats, which I'll get into later. Now, I mentioned uh, aliens can push each other before, right? And if they do, they push the figure forward if they have to go into a space. Uh, a hero can also be pushed. Let's say this person was here, uh, and this alien moves forward. Uh, in that case, that hero would suffer one damage and move one space in any direction. Uh, if they're pushed multiple times, they'll suffer one damage for each time they are pushed. Now, these aliens are dangerous because if they ever reach the starting area, you instantly lose the game. Now let's get into equipment. Uh, to activate weapons, you can, same thing, you can use dice rolls to activate stuff. So, uh, to activate the 2B gun here, you would need this symbol rolled, and this symbol rolled. And these don't have to be at the same time, you can put them one one at a time as you roll them. Once that weapon is ready, then you can roll the number of dice uh, on the weapon. So what this number tells you is this is the range, which is two, this is how many dice that you roll, uh, and this is the number you need to roll for a successful hit. So the 2B gun would roll two hit die, Uh, that's a five and a four. Those are both hits. So that means Kara, if she's up here, she could go bam, bam, and blast both of those aliens off the board. Swarm figures only have one health, so one hit each. The boss would require more than one hit, and you keep track of the uh, um, hits as you hit the boss. If you have a weapon like the multi-launcher here, uh, it shoots only in a straight line. The range is infinite, and you roll four dice, and it's two plus hits, but this sort of uh, symbol, or not symbol, but this means that if you, once you uh, use this weapon for the round, these dice are locked in. So this is a one-time use for the round. But if you do that, that's four dice. Uh, in that case, that'd be four hits. So if Kara was over here and fired that gun, bam, pew, 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 pew. Uh, blast all those aliens off the board. Items are activated the same way, like here we have the extra ammo item. Uh, all your weapons gain plus one hit die until the end of the round, discard after use. So if you fill this up with two wrench die, uh, you can use it and apply the effect. Attachments that I mentioned earlier uh, can make guns more powerful. They are permanent, but for example, if I put this underneath the 2B gun, 
Now I can roll three dice uh, every time I fire that weapon. And finally, there are special alien tech cards. I'm not gonna spoil these, but whenever you kill a boss, you can draw three cards from the top of this, choose one and discard the other two. Alternatively, you can uh, wait till the end of the round to do so. In order to attack an alien, there's always gotta be line of sight. Uh, so you, t you draw a line from the center of the space to whatever space you're trying to target. Uh, if there's ever like trees or something in the way, uh, it is blocked. Now, let's go back to that event I mentioned at the top. Limited equipments. Uh, with, when, as long as this is in play, heroes may not perform search actions or draw alien tech cards. So that's pretty shitty. So what you can do during the round is any player can allocate the appropriate die onto these spaces. If you do it to all the appropriate ones in a six player game, you need to fill all six, then you complete it and it's resolved. However, if you can't fill it all in one round, it stays in play. And finally, every level you play has an objective. In this case, it's extermination. There are different extermination tokens around the board. And what you're trying to do is go to them and go, okay, I need to roll gun die uh, to place into here. So as you fill them, however, notice it has that border, meaning these get locked for the round. Uh, but if you can complete it, uh, you will com uh, that token is completed and you're trying to get all of them to win the game. Once you complete all the tokens, you just gotta get back to the start area. So yeah, you're rolling and rolling. Uh oh, gotta move an alien. Oh, oh, and put this on this dice and use this to move and do all that. But once two minutes is up, you have to stop. Because once once all the heroes have done their actions, then all the aliens left activate. And you choose a group to activate at once. So you could say, okay, all the runners are all gonna move three. I'm not gonna move all of them, but you get the idea. And then biters, you know, all of them would roll one hit die for each hero within range one. Uh, like this one here would bite this hero. Uh, each hero suffers one damage on four plus, and then they move two spaces. Um, in this case, you, they would also be pushed, so they would take more damage. Um, there'd be more monsters taken care of than this, um, but I'm just giving you an example. Of, yeah, and every alien will activate depending on their behavior and their movement towards the uh, starting area. Now, how the damage system works is every time you take damage, your little cube goes further down the track. Uh, and you have um, things here where once you cross certain lines, you lose dice. So if once we get into yellow damage, um, one of your dice gets locked, the only way to get this back is to heal back up past here. If you get all the way here, you gotta lock two of your die, which is really crippling. Once you get to the end, you're dead and the game instantly ends in defeat. After all the aliens have activated and moved, uh, you check to see if you've won or lost, then everyone gets their die back. Uh, you turn all the search tokens face up again, uh, and then you go back to the top, draw an event card, and keep going. The game ends in victory once um, all of the objectives listed in the manual for that campaign mission have been completed, in this case, the extermination. Um, and all heroes have to return to the starting area and survive a round of alien movement. The game ends in defeat if any hero dies or an alien moves into the starting area or you don't finish the game before eight rounds have completed. But otherwise, that's it. You're just rolling those dice, uh, going, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on here. I'm gonna use this on this weapon, use this on this weapon and shoot it and bam, 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 bam blast these aliens move around, race to the objectives, and that's the game. So I've played several of these real-time dice rolling games, and this one is easily my favorite. Uh, the ease of play, the excitement, and the tension really packs a lot into these two-minute bursts of, okay, everybody, roll, roll, roll. Okay, you move there, you move there, you move there. The weapons and abilities feel powerful, the waves of aliens feel terrifying and unique with each of their different attacks and behaviors. Uh, because the game is relatively smooth to play, you never feel like you're stuck. A lot of what can really damn a real-time game is if the rules are too fiddly, and it's like, wait, uh, wh what does this one mean again, and uh, fuck, what, uh, what do I do with this? Um, all the symbols are marked clearly, and it's just move around, put dice on symbols to activate them, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, with this game, you're just blasting aliens, you can clearly grasp what you have to do at any given time. Even if it does feel frantic, but it never feels impossible. Uh, the minis are fantastic. The art is top notch. I love the production value of this. Um, I do think for some people though, this game will be too stressful. So 
You may not want to bring this out for people who are easily overwhelmed, especially if they are bad at making quick decisions while a clock is ticking. But if you have people who are game and ready for that and are like, yeah, let's do it. Let's work together as a team, get as many, get as much shit done as we can in a time limit. This is an absolute blast to play. Highly recommended, really, really fun. And like I said, my favorite of these real time dice rolling games.